Hey guys, what's going on? Third Street Reactions here. We're back. I'm Shane. Zach. We're back here with Star Wars and Clone Wars. We're watching in chronological order. Zach, we finished up one of my favorite arcs in the Clone Wars where Obi-Wan goes into cover. It's a very villain-esque thing, but it ends, in my opinion, with a, not the best duel, but a very cool character duel. Yeah, with I mean, Dooku and Anakin. Yeah, and just the moments. Like, I think that was a cool setting, just like the Naboo Palace. Mm -hmm. uh, that's some, just some abandoned room. It reminded me of, weirdly enough, Beauty and the Beast in the very beginning when everything is still dusty. Yeah. Like, no one is in there. You know, uh, Anakin, he's great, but he's still not good enough to beat Dooku. Yeah. He's and pushing Dooku, though. He's pushing Dooku, and Dooku is pushing 80 in yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. So I think he was, like, almost 80 in real life. He was in the 70s. Yeah. So, uh, no, I really like that arc. And we he get probably this... would have been in his 80s because he was in his 90s, I think, when The Hobbit came out. Oh, well, yeah, then he might have been in his fucking 80s. Yeah. Uh, and then we saw, uh, obviously, Anakin, like, the, the seeds of distrust get sowed. And, uh, you know, we can maybe debate whether we thought that was a good move by the Jedi to leave Anakin in the dark. they giving moments where it actually shows his disillusionment. Yeah. Instead of just, hey, I mean, I can save your wife. Yeah. These fucking guys, they... they... You know, they're not really there for me, and they, yeah, I'm, I'm conflicted. But yeah, I, I I love the prequels, but we see Anakin's worst moments as a human. I think the Clone Wars, we get to see what Obi Wan told Luke, like he was my best friend, he was the best pilot, he was a warrior, and I, that's one reason I, I love these so much. It's one of my favorite arcs, and we have a new episode here. And I think you'll like this. So, uh, in my opinion, I think everything from season three, the latter part of season three on up, is just very good. So, uh, anyways, guys, other than that, I think we're gonna jump in now. Hope this is the one. Hold on to the future? I know what that means. Which is that? Yeah, let me tell you about those witches, Shane. <laughs> I thought we already saw where she came back. Uh, well, she came back and got Savage Press. Now she's coming oh. back again. Because I fan that yeah. plan failed. Ass fell right out of that one, didn't it? Savage, that monster we created has forsaken us. He refused my guidance and escaped into the galaxy. I have nothing. You have everything needed to survive. You must give up the ways of the Sith and return to our fold. You will be loyal to no one. But your sister, and yourself. And then... You will fulfill your destiny and become a true night sister. You summoned me, my lord? I have learned Ventress has returned to Dathomir. Go there and wipe the witches out. All of them. <laughs> the witch hunt. Literally. What would it be like to be a sentient being in the midst of a bunch of goddamn droids? Like, he's literally in an army of droids. There's no one else there that's a thinking reason. Well, you see the way, at least, the way Grievous treats them, you know? Yeah. Do you pledge yourself to the sisterhood, to the magics? And the to the magics? Ways. Yeah. Remember, she's Rita Repulsa. Yeah, I think you told me that. Make my master grow. George had a lot of ideas about his universe and there being magic, and you know, he wanted to create like a fantasy in space, you know. And now we feast and celebrate the baptism of our new sister. <laughs> Wedding reception. Jesus. <laughs> Droid fighters, scatter! The war has come to dust me! We're not going to petition the Republic for help. No. They, no, they would not do that. <laughs> Right to their fortress. 
I love when they kind of bust these things out. I remember seeing a Phantom Menace action figure of the tank with the droids. You pull it out, and there's like eight battle droids you can get for it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Gather your weapons! The droid army is only here because of me, and so many are going to die. There is no time for regret. Now we must fight! Big ass hand. Let's go. Grievous is coordinating the attack. <laughs> Your new friend already. Go and lead us to victory. Get us the reinforcements we need. What the hell is a bald ducker? <laughs> the bald ducker? <laughs> bald ducker. <laughs> Take to the trees, sisters. We shall attack the droids it's from above. Hell the hell of a hairdo. It is, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah, that thing's good shit. Reports indicate Ventress is leading the attack. Send in the defoliator tank. We'll burn those witches to the ground. Defoliator. Yeah. Go to my chamber. There you will find a small metallic sphere. Bring it to the hidden cave. Yes, mother. will need the aid of the undead army to achieve victory. Then I will begin the chant of resurrection. Her look reminds me of Twin Rova. Walk her at a time. Okay. Gandor's foster mothers. Alem Kori. It's another Sunday for me. Yes. <laughs> I like her voice, man. Yeah, yeah. Rise! 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 Hang her head upside down. Pretty scary looking. Okay. Like rage zombies, too. He didn't even want to do it. <laughs> Roger, Roger. The army of the dead are reinforcements. It would just be so much scary if they were fighting non droids. Because you, you kind of feel for them. Like, oh shit. Ventress has her army now. Now I can deal with Count Dooku. Which is going to do with that, Zach? You know. Now for Dooku. Oh. <laughs> There's just so many of them, you know what I mean? I know, it's... I don't particularly care for how the zombie things can just run through 
like a berserker to just take out so many of the fucking things. Yeah. I mean, if it's just a, an embodiment for the magic to do its thing. It, it is. It's got no fear, and it's well, I meant it's got high points. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a fucking bag of bones. Prove you're the greater warrior. If I win, your army leaves. If you win, the Night Sisters will surrender to you. Four arms. You can swing from so many other angles. Here and do that. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Doom is upon us, sister. <laughs> Run. This is a pockets for them. Because there aren't that many of them. You must stop Mother Dalzin before she kills me. Follow the village's magic. It appears as a green mist. Follow it to its source and eliminate Dalzin. Weird to see like that, isn't it? What I want to know is. I've mentioned this before. Why Sidious just permits her to exist. Um, and you think that he would do you, you think she could do that to Sidious? I know there's answers to those questions that aren't in the show because I looked them up and no. Leave the phone at once. Let you and that traitor continue plotting against me. Never. <laughs> The idea is if he contacted Sidious, Sidious might just let him die. But at the same time, she couldn't do it to Sidious. No, because, I mean, like I said, I, that's the, the answer is no, and they don't explain it precisely in the show. Ever? No. But okay, I, but she like, couldn't do it because of just how powerful he is? Yes. Yeah. And he delves into the magic-like aspect of the Force as well. Georgia. Where do I go? What do I do? Your destiny always remains ours. How did that bitch go? <sighs> Doing whatever they do in Harry Potter and whooping around. And <laughs> vasperating, or whatever yeah. they call that shit. Pretty good episode, huh? It was. I mean, it leaves me with a lot of questions about... Your question like, of the, 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 the hierarchy. The hierarchy of power, power levels. Yeah, and because so, it, but, bring, it, bring, it really reinvigorates my love for the Sith growing up. Yeah. And... Yeah, would, I mean, so, she so the, the Dooku. And the, sure the answer is... Dooku's unprepared, probably, because he's yeah. uh, been trained for his whole life for this kind of shit. With Sidious, though, like, why does he even permit her to be there? I mean, I guess for yeah. him, maybe she's not a challenge, and he can see that. The official answer is that, and, uh, I mean, I, I, actually, we had this conversation a, a while. I remember we had something like it. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's essentially, that that is like a tribal group of people on a backwater planet. But he's... Essentially, the way he looks at it then is that he's just overconfident. At that point, I mean, like, he is it, it, his his character flaw. I mean, not that he isn't, yeah. not that he has great aspects of his character. Yeah. But in terms of his abilities and his abilities that are well, his abilities and his shortcomings. Yeah. A shortcoming of his is that he's overconfident. 
Yeah. At this point, he's ruling the galaxy, both sides of it, essentially. Yeah. And uh, the only reason he doesn't make his move now is because he can still beat Usurp and the Jedi. Um, but he's the most powerful person in the galaxy. And Dooku, at this point, is him or Anakin. Or Anakin or, uh, Dooku is the second most uh, powerful person in the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Yoda. And then Dooku. Yeah. And then it's supposed to be like Anakin and Mace are right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, Talzin is right up there uh, with, with Dooku, in a way. Or right underneath Dooku. But she also has no power. She has no nothing. You know what I mean? So they don't really worry about her. I mean, all in terms of influence. Yeah. So Palpatine could take them out anytime he wanted. I mean, I think he, he's aware of Dooku's dealings with her. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Dooku himself was unprepared for this because Sidious is way more powerful than Yoda. But if Yoda kind of stabbed him in the back, it'd, it'd be, be kind of like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just unprepared for her. Um, but in the end, he, they won. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Did but, Talzin die? No, she didn't die. Okay, she just did the evasperation shit. Or yeah. Whatever it's called. I don't think it's called that. But it's something I, like that. I can't remember what it's called either. Yeah. But uh, no, she's gone. But uh, the Night Sisters, that whole planet, that whole religion is gone. Okay, and they've been so around they, in the EU for a long time. But they they won. They were wiped out. They're wiped out. And they, Except they, in the video game Jedi Fallen Order, they is that canon? Um, it is. Yeah, everything after the Disney acquisition is canon. Okay. So that takes place between three and four, and you play as a Padawan who survived the purge. Mm-hmm. And uh, a thousand you, lips. No, thousand isn't in it. But you go to Dathomir. Mm-hmm. It's one of the planets you go to, and like there's like one or two Night Sisters left, and they talk about this great war and all the droids coming, just killing everybody. We get to see kind of a bunch of undead as well. So, but does Talzin go and do anything else? You want the answer? Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen her. Okay. And I don't know uh, if she's come back in the canon yet, but she is alive. It's confirmed that she's alive, but they, you know, they got the card of the sleeve. That's it. I just guess like they can it. always bring her into the films or something. They can always bring her back, but uh, she's out there. She could be a credible threat in a future Star Wars film. Yeah, if they keep that card, like you said, up their sleeve. And we, I was not impressed with seven, eight, and nine. I mean, yeah, its story, its main story. I'll admit it. And yeah, it just is what it is. So mm-hmm. maybe in future films, they can come up with some different angles. Her ability to resurrect in zombie form. You know, they're obviously powered by that green mist. Yeah. Uh, so they got super strength and speed and endurance and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You had to kind of dismember them to take them out. Yeah. Uh, it just one is interesting thing that George had the idea of the forces out there, the Jedi have mastered it, the Sith have mastered another side of it, but there are other religions. In the ODU, actually, there's like six or seven different religions of the Force. So we're considering that the Jedi and the Sith are just different facets. Yeah. I mean, the Jedi have ability. Yeah, the Jedi like because of their the time they've been in the game and the resources, kind of like the Catholic Church. They, they feel like they've really mastered. The, the force as, as it should be with their philosophy. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, the Sith obviously disagree, but uh, well, the Sith know. are basically just an antithesis of the Jedi, where they are just yeah, we're doing what you do, but we want to rule everything and yeah, and we don't deny well, yeah, we don't deny ourselves you know pleasures and all this other stuff yeah. you know. And but then this take with the Night Sisters, for example, it's just another version of what the dark side of the force could be but there's also some light in there because of how they care for each other yeah because so the sith are always out to like hey you know they're I don't, more i don't fucking like you they're right? consumed they're like, yeah i don't yeah. fucking like you either yeah the, we'll work this, together one day you have to fucking try to kill them it's yeah time. well that's the, the rule bane implemented that the sith yeah. there used to be a bunch of them and they yeah. probably had that type of relationship but they were all buying for power though in the end mm-hmm. um yeah they have a sisterhood uh, and obviously, on that planet, like there's the males, the male Eridonians, they interbred with uh, the Night Sisters, and they created like the I mean, the clan that Darth uh, Savage oppresses from, and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and that Darth Maul's from. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, they have a version of the Force that is manifested more the way they've studied it, and their little backwater tribe manifests as like a, more of a magic. I, I just think that's really interesting. And then ultimately, he didn't get to that stuff in the originals, yeah. in the prequels. He you know was telling a backstory of the originals. But uh, Star Wars Rebels, you actually, uh, which George was not involved in, but it was like directly from Dave Filoni and his work with George. Mm. Uh, We get to see some of the stuff that George was thinking. And we see a little bit here with the magic. I'm not too perturbed, I guess, by their presence at Wisen City just to take them out because you get to to think about how much the Sith accomplish. A a couple times that conquered the galaxy. Yeah, they sat course on a thousand years ago. Yeah, so. You know, that's where all the Darksaber and the. The Mandalorians teamed up with them, and mm-hmm. they were ruling the galaxy for a bit. And yeah. then with Sidious, I mean, he accomplished that, you know, with only a few Sith and just influ- undermining an influence. 
Yeah. So with the new rule too, he went in and undermined everyone by not by power, brute power. He tricked everyone. Yeah, and also it kind of refined the yeah. power in a way because it refined them their yeah. weapons, their mo their it refined their motives, it refined their abilities. Yeah. In a way that yeah, it's, I, a, it's like a distillery. Yeah. And you distilled this power down into this potent force instead of having it scattered out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the story, uh, Sidious okay Dooku to destroy the whole planet. Not to st- destroy the planet, but to, you know, to lay to siege. The planet. Yeah, rage or lay siege on the planet. Mm. So, uh, you know, it, eventually it came around to Sidious, like, all right, I guess we'll take these guys out. Mm. But, you know, he didn't really see them as a threat. So kind the of. The fact that Asajj went back is kind of what triggered that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, they uh, uh, yeah, they were tracking Asajj. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, and now, that, does Asajj. Now, she eventually dies, right? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I remember her dying. I don't think you would ever see her die. Like, there's nothing you have watched or seen that re- reveals her conclusion. Okay. Yeah. Because even in the micro series, she's there, but you don't see her die. Yeah, correct. You just she fights Anakin. Yeah. How how do you feel about her journey now? Like when you look at her whole story, like she she started off as a Jedi, and then her master was killed. She's taken in by these pirates, and then she was taken in by the Sith, and the Sith abandoned her. And now she's taken by the Night Sisters, and then she lost them. I know when she was originally conceived as a character, I didn't particularly like her. Yeah. I know that she was born from the idea in Attack of the Clones to have a witch, like a Force witch, yeah. as a character until Christopher Lee stepped in and said, hey, I would like to be in a Star Wars film. Yeah. Like, oh, well, fucking, we'll give you a guy. Well, I, I know some of her uh, mother Talzin and the Night Sister, like, the Night Sisters have been in the canon. Uh, and but George wasn't in G canon, and then Dave Filoni came along and well, George, you know, there's all these Night Sisters, and he's like, oh, I suppose, yeah. uh, and then they put them into the canon and established like, okay, there's different religions of the Force. Well, I'm just saying that the film though, isn't yeah, that correct. They, they no, you're correct, but her look, Talzin, like not Talzin, but Asajj. Uh, yeah, Asajj. Asa- there's like a Asajj like character that in Episode One, The Phantom Menace, that they were toying with. That was kind of like a witch, yeah. and they ultimately went with Dark Maul, which is the right choice. And then Absolutely. two. Same thing. Yeah, well, Christopher Lee stepped in, and who's going to yeah. deny that? Man? No one. Yeah. He's like, Please. And they made the right choice there. Yeah, he's like, uh, my friend. Yeah. He was in the films. Yeah. <laughs> I got to be in one less franchise. But... <laughs> I know. I, I think that's good. And ultimately, I think it was best to have her in this show. And uh, so her journey has been really weird because now she's had all these different paths. So now where does she go? It's I like of... her more. That I, but that's the point I was driving yeah. at is that I like her more, that I've seen more of her and seen where this has gone and like with Dathomir. Um, originally, like I said, I didn't really care for her, but it's paid off. No, yeah. Uh, if, if anything, George and, and Dave, like, they, were, they were very patient like with... Ryden. I didn't care for his inclusion originally, but yeah, it paid off. I, mean, yeah. I still don't think he's as awesome as you do, but... I, I think know he, you don't, but I you don't like he, those type of characters. I don't. Yeah, so there's nothing that could be done to make him that no, cool. You never had a chance. Uh, yeah, I know, but <laughs> Hedio came as close as anyone could to making him cool, I think. He did. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess uh, for me, it's like he competes with the Great Fox in my mind. Like great, guess. great fox to me. Yeah, because it's the same technology, be, right? Yeah, it's kind of born from the same idea. Yeah, the ninja. Yeah, and to me, it's just you can't top that. So no, I, I agree. She, uh, as far as female characters go, like uh, I think George and Dave, they were very patient when they made her and they made Ahsoka. I know you know Ahsoka is around later, mm-hmm. but she was the most hated character at first, and, and I think kind of for Ahsoka. good reason. Yeah, because like, who the hell is this girl? Well, just why isn't she the Revenge of the Sith? Why is she saying Sky Guy? Yeah, but then like you know, she becomes very compelling. Uh, and you haven't even seen the most compelling stuff. I mean, you probably got a hint of it in the book of Boba Fett when she tells Luke, or when she tells uh, Din, that I don't want to train him because I've seen what happens to a Jedi Knight, the best of us, mm-hmm. when he gets trained later in his life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, you can imagine. I'm fucking 50 years old, but that's the, probably infantile age for something like that. Well, I think it's, no, it is. Well, the most, and this is off subject. What's interesting to me is what are those flashbacks going to be? With like the Order sixty six stuff, they but keep it's also been they a keep while. hinting it. So I wonder if we'll see fucking hated Christians try to fucking kill him or something. And maybe he's a crawl. And then he pushes them back. Like a little gizmo. Wouldn't that be cool? It would be cool. Yeah. I just wonder though, that would he really be able to? Well, they could be building up to be very powerful. Yeah, but I mean, I guess Anakin being the chosen one didn't always mean that he was the most powerful. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it just means he's got a destiny. Yeah. He, I mean, he happens to be one of the most powerful, but he never gets to the point where he is because of the story of his life. Yeah. Um, and just because he is, it doesn't mean like. You know, you can't. You know, you can have a moment. Michael Jordan, he had moments where he got crossed over. You know, yeah. Anakin, get, he can get his ass kicked once. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what I mean, it flies in the face of everything I always imagined Darth Vader being when I was a kid. 
Yeah. And when I saw Darth Vader as a kid, he's this unstoppable force. Well, I think he is in the suit. Like, just... Well, that's what I didn't like about parts of Kenobi. Is that he's kind of, you see a little more of the humanity in him. Yeah. Like an adolescent Darth Vader, and I didn't need that in my life. I, but, uh, yeah. And so I didn't need that shit. I mean, you needed the confrontation with Obi-Wan. Yeah, but I would say that he's the only person in the galaxy. Him and someone else, which you haven't seen, get him to the point where he's damaged. I get that. Yeah. But my, I guess everything leading up to that, that's why I always felt that Kenobi should have been shorter. Yeah. Like, if you compress that and cut out some of the shit where he's, like, dogging Obi-Wan through the streets. And yeah. And, like, dragging him through the fire. Like, it just seems, like, drawn out. Yeah. And I don't, I don't need it. No, I, I don't need that for the character. But yeah. some people, evidently, just can't get enough. I, I liked that like stuff. People that just can't have a bowl of cereal. You gotta have a whole fucking box. Well, I can tell you what. You, you're the biggest I consumer know, of cereal I know. with the biggest fucking bowl. I, I know. I loved it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I liked that stuff. It's, I, a, I, uh, it's an analogy, Shane. It was just a, it's a very hopeless show. You know, so it wasn't... It didn't give me those moments of, oh, man. You know? It just gave me, like, this is sad. This is sadder. Yeah, that had to happen. Well... Now, you know, we, we got like another 10 years before he's redeemed and, you know, and even then it's sad. So I, I think to me, the great parts of Anakin's life are now and uh, ultimately he does the right thing for the love of the son. He and, does. Um, but uh, no, uh, I, I thought you would like a bad guy centered episode and it's just the, the Sith and uh, the Confederacy just like they're winning. They lay waste to these people. They kill them all. Yeah. Uh, Asajj Ventress, like, you know, there's a spark of hope and then they all get wiped out. And now she's alone. Yeah. Uh, and we had a like a close call with Dooku. And I'm okay with that happening to Dooku like once or twice, you know, ever. And that's all that happens. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Ventress is very powerful when she just happened to have that little sneaky piece of hair. Oh, you mean uh, Talzin? Talzin, sorry, not Ventress, yeah. Um, so and I think that can happen if you're being sneaky, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Palpatine wouldn't win against all the Jedi. He was being cunning, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, War was the weapon. Ultimately, she lost. Anyways, I think that's a pretty long conversation, don't you? Yes, it was. Uh, anyways, guys, appreciate it. Make sure you check back next time and also check out our Patreon right here. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in here. If you like what we do, like and subscribe. There's a link tree with stuff on it, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and a TikTok. You can find us on there. You can comment down below. You can thank us. There's a button, and it gives us money, but you don't have to <laughs> if you're not feeling very thankful. Money. <laughs> thanks, guys.